Hello world and welcome back to another tutorial for blood magic. Now today is going to be part two of the previous episode which was all about rituals. So if you haven't seen that one first to understand the basics as well as everything in 1.16 I recommend going checking out that one first. Now this as I say is going to be part two and nothing in this episode is going to be relevant to 1.16 as of yet. These rituals we're going to be covering today are only for 1.12, however they will probably soon be implemented into 1.16 later on so it is still worth a watch if you haven't come across any of these rituals before. But before we start today I would just like to say if this tutorial helps you out in any way shape or form please could you leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out we have grown so much since this series started and i cannot believe the support that is happening here i also stream on twitch every monday thursday and sunday and if you're watching this right as this comes out i am live right now so come check us out after you've watched the tutorial so first thing I want to show is that there is a new item or rather an old item that was in 1.12 originally. Now for this you'll need the Ritual Diviner, we showed this in the previous episode of the tutorial, as well as Blood Shards which we've now shown for both 1.16 and 1.12 and you'll need Destructive Wills. Now destructive wills we've also learnt in the previous tutorial on how to get these as well. And you put these inside of a hellfire forge and then you have to use a common tartaric gem or higher in order to act activate this craft. And this will give you the ritual dismantler. Now quickly to show how this dismantler works, here we have uh, the ritual of the full spring. And we showed this previously, this is in 1.16 and 1.12, and this is fully formed as you can see here. What you can do is if you right click with the Ritual Dismantler on the Master Stone, it will get rid of all the runes. And then if you do it again, it will get rid of the Master Stone. Very, very simple stuff. So with two clicks, you can destroy your entire rune uh, ritual at once. So say you had a big massive one, one of the larger ones that has like 40 runes or so, and you want to move it just like three blocks over. Two clicks with this, and you can just start rebuilding it with the Ritual Diviner. Very simple stuff. I wish it comes to, or I hope it comes to 1.16 rather soon. But now, we are going to move on to the actual rituals. Again, this is going to be for 1.12 only, and we're going to start with the ones that just require the Ritual Diviner, not the Ritual Diviner Dusk. Uh, both these tools we showed also in the previous tutorial. But let's stop talking about the previous tutorial and talk about this one. So the first one, we have the Ritual of the High Jump. It requires 12 runes, all 12 of them being air. What it does is once activated, it allows the user to jump 18 blocks but you will take fall damage if you do not land on something. So here we have a tower of 18 blocks tall and it will cost 1000 life points in order to actually activate it but once it is activated uh, it's going to cost 15 life points per jump. So if we just walk up here it sees we jump up straight away and this actually works in a bit of a I suppose a plus shape anywhere in between the air runes is how it works. If I just run up it just automatically does it. I don't have to jump at all or anything you see if i try and land in this space here it will throw me back up straight away and you will take full damage i'm in creative mode so obviously i won't take full damage but if you fall down here you will take this full damage and then it'll jump you back up so you've got to be careful when doing things like that moving on we have the le volcano frigius <laughs> that's the closest i could probably get to that uh, this requires eight runes four of fire four of water now what this is basically is an auto cobblestone generator and the cobblestones will spawn in a plus shape inside the fire runes. Now this will cost 500 life points to activate and for every block of cobblestone spawned it will cost 25 extra LP. So we're going to use the creative activation crystal for this uh, and we right click this here and there you go. It's just instantly spawned. You don't hear a sound or anything and if you break it it will then spawn again. So you could probably use the ritual of the crusher for this we showed that previously and that will basically destroy blocks in a certain area and you can define the area so this could be useful for that if not if you're using other mods you could probably just have this constantly mine itself out with a block breaker since you're most likely playing a mod pack that has that Next we have the Crash of the Timberman, this requires 8 runes, all 8 of them earth, and what we'll do, it will cut down trees within a 10 block area, 
um, 10 block area horizontally and a 30 block area vertically. Now this will cost 20,000 life points in order to activate and for every block destroyed it will cost 10 life points. So here we've got obviously the bones and saplings and also you must have a chest on top of the master stone, master ritual stone to actually place these items inside. So if we quickly throw a few of these around you see that it's instantly started working I've I've already activated this and it will just start chopping things down one block at a time it will take a while for the bigger trees but it's a lot it's very very quick very very quick and now as you can see it does also the saplings and in 1.12 I don't believe sticks drop from um, trees um, but apples do still so hopefully when this comes to 1.16 the sticks will come in here as well and obviously not everything I have fast tree decay on which is why not everything's being picked up and some things are just being placed into the world um, through natural tree decay but if you didn't have tree decay on this would definitely be a great option for you to go through next we have the ritual of interdiction this requires eight runes all eight of them air what it will do it will repel mobs from the master ritual stone which is in the center now it, by default it will work in basically a two block area so just two blocks out from the master ritual stone in all four, to, four cardinal directions but it can be modified to up to nine blocks both horizontally in both the x and z axis and also nine blocks vertically on the y axis all centered on the master stone now this will cost 1000 life points to activate but then no further costs and then mobs do not take damage uh, do not take full damage within the area so say you had some sort of mob spawner up here and they were in a trough if they went push forward and fell down here they wouldn't take full damage from the actual fall or anything but the activated ritual will start pushing them away but once they leave the area of effect then they will start taking full damage so i've made it night here we're now on easy mode i'm going to activate this right here and you see it starts flowing into the ritual if i start placing zombies you see they start getting thrown away but they can be quite close you see that's the two blocks but if i put them here it starts getting back thrown away now you have to use the ritual tinkerer in order to increase this size now unfortunately in 1.12 you can't see the red overlay like you can in 1.16 so what you need to do is set this to define area right click on the ritual and then you've got to set your block so it's got to be nine blocks out so if you go one two three four. so i've been trying to rearrange the range and it definitely can be done so if i right click on this you can see you change it to push and then if I clicked over here, it says the first block has been stored. And then if you click the second one, it says new range successfully set. But then when I spawn these zombies, apparently they just stop being activated. And no matter how many times I reactivate the crystal, it doesn't work. It's only when I restart the whole thing itself, it starts repelling again. So it seems to be this is a little bit of a bug at the moment when it comes to the ritual tinkerer and the ritual of interdiction. But moving on, we now have the layering of the filler. This requires 12 runes, 8 of them water, 4 of them earth. And what this will do, it will place blocks within the chest inside the area of the ritual. So you see this cornered out area inside this chest on top of the master ritual stone. You can put whatever blocks you want inside of here. We just have stone for this example. And when activated, it will fill in this area in between the ritual stones or the ritual runes or master or whatever you want to call them ritual stones now this will cost 5,000 life points to activate and for every block placed it will cost a further 50 life points so if we activate this here you will see it will just start placing them right away now I do believe if we break one it will start back here so it's a way of having an infinite floor um, I mean it could be useful say you maybe you have I don't know, a load of redstone ore that you want to break over time. You can stick a redstone ore in here and it will automatically do it and you can have some sort of hopper, I don't know. Or maybe you just want to have a quick, easy way to have this making a platform for you. I don't know. You could do many, many different things you could probably do here. But obviously, once it finishes, it stops and you can keep breaking this and it will refill it over time. 
Next, we have the Call of Sapphire. This requires 12 runes, all 12 of them air. And what it will do is basically act like a massive hopper. Any item that is within the ritual area will be placed in a chest that can be defined. Now, by default, it's just on top of the Master Ritual Stone, but the chest can move slightly. It just has to be within two blocks both horizontally and vertically of the master ritual stone as well as that the suction area can be defined up to nine blocks both horizontally and vertically so if we activate this here and then say we throw in one of these master ritual stones you see it instantly gets teleported away and you can see in here but what you can do is if we have it just a little bit further away say here what we can do is if we break this have our ritual tinkerer on set to information we'll right click on here so we see the information of the chest then we go to define area we have to shift right click onto here and you see suction and you see chest now to do chest you then have to shift right click on the chest both do that new range is now successfully activated so if we right click here it will now go into this chest instead of it being on top and then if you go to define area again and this time go to suction you can now change the area to say here to here that way if i threw my thing down here it didn't work but if i throw it down within the area it didn't work again so to, to define an area when it comes to the suction if you just did it on the floor from here to over here what it was saying is that it only works now in this part you see it disappeared but not when i throw it up here it's because it's going through the blocks so if you want this to work very well you're going to actually have to make a little bit of a square here so now if we go to right here to define the new block and then over here to define the new range it's now going to be in a cube shape and now it'll work in this area that is probably how i got this one wrong over here with the sigil of ritual of interdiction now, now that I've set my range to be the top of here to down here, it's now working again. Moving on, we have the Ritual of Containment. Now, this is going to be the exact opposite to the Ritual of Interdiction. This requires 16 runes. All 16 of them will be Earth. And what it will do, it will pull mobs to the center of the ritual area in midair. So between the Master Ritual Stone and this top section of the ritual, it will get suck mobs into this section here. Uh, now this also has an area that can be defined, but by maximum it can have to be nine blocks horizontally and nine blocks vertically from within the side or from the center of the Master Ritual Stone. Now this requires 2,000 life points in order to activate, and for every one mob per tick, it will cost one life point. So basically, if you had two mobs, it would cost 2 LP per tick. If you had 3 mobs, it would be 3 LP per tick, and so on and so forth. So to demonstrate this, this time we're not going to turn it into night. We are going to go into normal mode here. If we now place these mobs here, you'll see that they instantly start getting sucked in. This guy is too far away, but if you push them a little bit closer to the area, he will then next also be sucked in. Now, similar to how it worked before, let's now go to information to select this, then go to define area. We see containment. We can then go from here first range to here new range has been set so if i put mobs here it works and if i put mobs over here it now also works much bigger range afterwards we have the ritual of the satiated stomach this will require 28 runes 12 of them air eight of them earth four of them water and four of them fire now what this will do it will work in a 33 by 33 by 33 area so it's a very very large area of effect this is uh, centered on the master ritual stone and it will feed the player any food that is within the chest that is on top of the master ritual stone so for here we just had steak however it will not fill up your hunger bar so if we go into survival mode you see that we obviously have full bones here now i haven't activated this so let's get down to a couple of meat bones disappearing so here you see I've got a little bit of hunger now, so if I activate this, you'll see my food will automatically get filled up, which is very, very surprising, as that is not meant to happen. <laughs> it should not fill up your hunger guard, but I guess it means how when you first start it, 
it will fill up your hunger bar but afterwards your hunger can depreciate or rather it will keep you from depreciating so if we now went out the area and came back now that it's been activated it shouldn't fill us up so i've given myself the hunger effect and took some damage to give myself some heart so if i head now over within range of the ritual over here it shouldn't actually refill our hunger bar actually but what it should do is keep us stable which is definitely what we want now i've said it's also hard mode which is why things are going down so quickly and i don't know ah it does fill it up interesting it appears that the wiki was wrong it isn't meant to fill up your hunger bar but apparently it does <laughs> i don't know why uh, the wiki seems to be wrong there from the testing as you can just see the hunger bar does get filled up even when it's not meant to and i have the hunger effect as well and i still have it completely full which is a bit strange to me now as this is such a powerful ritual it will cost 100,000 life points in order to actually activate but per operation it will also cost you 20 life points so every time a bit of meat is used up to keep your hunger bar up it will cost an extra 20 life points now finally for the standard ritual diviner we have the ritual of suppression now we have covered in a previous tutorial the sigil of suppression and this does something very very similar now this is gonna require 12 runes eight of them air four of them water and what it will do it will create or it, rather it will replace liquid blocks in a 10 block radius with air blocks now um, in the guidebook here uh, it will actually be called the dome of it will actually be called the dome of suppression but it is the ritual of suppression when you're looking through your ritual diviner there you go you see the ritual of suppression is in the diviner something i should also say it was mentioned pr previously is that in 1.16 if you shift and right click you can go through everything but in 1.12 you can also left click in order to go back in the list but just not as fast so to activate this ritual it will cost 5,000 life points and then for every tick it will cost you 2 life points. So it doesn't depend on how many liquid blocks are turned into air, it is over time. So it's going to be one you want to have a lever on in order to flick it on and off, maybe use this for some sort of aqua door. So quickly here I've just placed in a couple of water blocks and if I activate this you see all of it is now completely disappeared. But the water blocks are still here, we are now going to be ticking down my uh, life points ever so slowly now but um it's something you can nearly forget about i mean it's meant to be per tick but as you can see my uh my life points aren't actually going down seems to be a lot of strange things working on here but if we get a lever we can actually turn this off if we need to so put this on here give it a redstone signal and then all the water blocks if you give it a few seconds should return there you go right there so now it's time for the Ritual Diviner Dusk. We have covered this on how to create it before, so we won't be going over that today, but we'll be having the, the Ritual Diviner of Dusk now. Everything about it is the exact same as the Ritual Diviner, except it now, it now uses Dusk Runes instead of just the um, Earth, Fire, Water and Air. It now uses Dusk. And the first one on our list is going to be the Ritual of Speed. This will require nine runes, eight of them air, and one of them dusk. And what it will do, it will launch the player between 30 and 40 blocks in a given direction, but the full damage is not applied, so you've got to be careful here. You've got to either have some slime blocks maybe, or something to cushion your full, maybe some decent armor, whatever your mod pack allows you. Now, it will cost you 1,000 life points to activate, and for every launch, it will cost you 15 life points. Now, this also works, as it said, in a specific direction. So, without holding down shift, you can left click in order to change the direction. You see there's east, south, and west. And this actually works for every single ritual, but not all of them actually depend on your directions. So if we get this to the ritual of speed, so we have it on the ritual speed here. If I put this down here, you can see that it says that it's not fully complete. It's because at the moment I have this set to south. When it's set to south, it will launch me in the southern direction. You can sort of tell as this one in particular is in a bit of an arrow shape. So if I place, if I now activate this and then walk towards it, it will launch me forward rather rapidly. But 
say we had this in a different direction, so if I place down another Master Ritual Stone here, and then I put the Diviner, say, to West, and then start building it again and activate this, it's now going to fire me off in this direction. So that's why you, you, you want to make sure this is in the right place you want to go to, otherwise you might end up building it wrong. So you can approach it from different directions as well, and it's always going to take you the same exact way. Next up is the Aura of Expulsion. Now this one's going to be more for multiplayer if you're playing with Blood Magic in multiplayer, as this is going to teleport players that are unwhitelisted randomly 100 blocks away. Now, this is going to require 48 runes, it's rather large, one of the biggest. Uh, it's going to require 16 earth runes, 16 air runes, 12 dusk runes, spelt very weirdly, and 4 fire runes. Now, this is going to cost 40,000 life points to activate, but then 2,000 life points per teleportation. So, the range of this is pretty small. It ends up being roughly the size of this ritual altar as it is. Now, you may be wondering what the heck the chest is for. Inside the chest, you can see I have a blood orb. Now, this one's owned by me. To whitelist someone, you need to have a blood orb of that player to be in this chest, and that will be what determines the whitelist. Now, I can't show how this works as I'm obviously in a single player world, but once activated, if the person wasn't whitelisted, they'll come into the air and suddenly get zipped away 100 blocks in any direction. It could be, it's completely random. Um, sometimes it can be good as obviously it keeps some places secure, but at the same time, if your base is large enough, it can actually zip you inside your base. Say you have your doors locked and this is outside, someone can get in here and over and over again can actually zip you away. And since it costs 2,000 life points per teleportation, and they, if they know how it works, they could go in here repeatedly, repeatedly, and that, that would actually drain your life points and eventually kill you if you didn't have a constant supply of LP coming in. So you've got to be very careful when using this in multiplayer. Next up, we have what I consider to be one of the most powerful rituals in the whole of blood magic. And this is the Mark of the Falling Tower. It costs 100 runes in order to create this. 32 air, 20 fire, 20 earth, 12 dusk, and 16 water. Now what this will do, it will spawn a meteorite from the sky dependent on its activation block. Now this meteorite is going to be 100% or rather 95% full of ores. Now, uh, depending on what activation block you use it's either going to be an iron block gold block or diamond block is dependent on how big it's going to be so with an iron block it's a radius of six it's a six sided or not six sided it's a six wide uh sphere gold is seven radius and for diamond it's a four radius now they each of these have a different activation price so for iron it will cost you 1 million life points, for gold it will cost you 2.5 million life points, and for diamond it will cost you 5 million life points. Now these obviously have different rarities, no, it doesn't just affect the size. So if you're having iron, it will most likely take things like iron, coal, maybe even a bit of lapis. Not the best things you can really get, it will also give you a bit of iron as well if I didn't say that already. Uh, gold, it will give you more redstone and gold stuff, and for diamond, it will give you emeralds and diamonds. Now, this does work if the configs are set with other ores, so you probably get copper or rubies and stuff, all dependent on what you have in your mod pack, but the price is still the same. Now, something else to note is that when you actually bring in the meteorite, in order, once you've activated this, you then throw a block, so you would throw the gold, iron, or diamond block on top of the area and a meter will come from the sky and it will blow up the whole pretty much the whole of the ritual area will be destroyed so you want to have this well away from the base it's not something you could farm otherwise it will get destroyed so let's get into a different world in order to demonstrate this so here we are in a regular world here now i've got four of these rituals set up and they're reasonably close together and i also have here 10 million life points in preparation for this now i've got 10 million life points because i have the archmage blood orb claimed um 
if you're playing 1.16, the Archmage isn't actually in the pack, it only goes up to Master, but in 1.12 you have the Archmage. So here we've got a series of blocks. Now, something I want to show here is just the destruction that this has. So if we activate this here, it's the, you see nothing happens. It's not until we actually throw one in, it disappears, and then out of nowhere, this massive meteorite is going to come in. It takes a few seconds, but it starts falling down, and then smash. Here is now our six wide, or six radius wide, so it's actually 12 wide, of blocks. As you can see, it's got the copper, iron, oh, it does have lapis and redstone in this one then as well. Even gold, I'm very surprised. But as you can see, it's even got the modded ones, so we've got some tin here, obviously copper, uh, silver, so it can be quite powerful. But, obviously this is going to end up being quite expensive. Now, I said that it's going to blow up, but there is a way to actually stop this. And it's using obsidian. Now, if you have obsidian, above it has to be above the ritual stone. It will then hit this and not blow anything up underneath it. It will do an explosion sound, but it won't actually blow anything up. So you can have this a little bit higher. As you can see, it, it fell to the sky. It spawns a little way up, but it does go on a bit of a trajectory. So you have to make sure that it's a bit clear. But we'll have it just in line for now. And here we'll show again. This time we'll be using iron. Again, we'll throw this in here. It'll activate. We'll step back just in case. And another meteorite will fall from the sky. This time landing on the obsidian. See, there you go. The obsidian ends up being the center block of the meteorite however it hasn't actually destroyed the ritual stones what it will do it will any block that's already in the way will actually just void it out it won't actually be a part of the ores so if you want the maximum amount of ores you can see the obsidians in here you want to make sure it's a little bit higher that way you get the maximum amount out of each meteorite so with this one we're gonna do our obsidian just a little bit taller We'll put this, say, here. That probably works there. And um, we'll also do gold this time. Again, it's going to take a few seconds, but the center of it is going to be the center of the obsidian. There we go. So you see, I got I got this perfectly in line. And this one actually gave us emerald as well. I'm very, very surprised there, as well it gives us all the lower resources as well. It even gave us some diamonds. But... Obviously, this one costs 2.5 million, so you've got to make sure you have a lot. We've already burned through 4.5 million just with these three alone. Right, and lastly, I'm not even going to bother. Let's look at the explosion. Uh, there are some do the diamond block. Now, this one, again, costs 5 million points. So now we only have 500,000. This is the reason it's the most expensive. Oh, God, you do like the explosion. Now, you can see this one's just a hot, lot higher concentrated that one over there still has the diamonds and stuff, but this one has a lot more of them, but it's a lot smaller. Something to note, something you can also do while using the obsidian technique is that you can actually stack the meteorites on top of each other. So you're going to have to have more obsidian and you're going to have to keep going up and up and up and up. And you can see I've got another one prepped here. And if we now activate this, we're going to use iron because it would take me a while to get even more. If we activate this and then give it a bit of iron there, oh, let's actually get it on top there perfect you'll see that it actually falls on top of this obsidian point there you go so you could just keep going up and up and up and then have maybe a massive quarry if maybe you're using buildcraft or an rf tools builder you could just build this one area and have it constantly churning out if you are somehow getting enough lp now i'm using over here a big old tier 5 altar here and i've just been using my creative knife to fill this up repeatedly so you can get it to actually fill quite fast and if you had multiple um blood altars you could go even faster so there is a way you could automate this but you would have to get say a million life points per second so it'd be a big product but it could be done but let's go back into the super flat i will say i am a massive fan of the mark of the falling tower it's very powerful but next we have the Penance of the Lended Soul. This requires 51 runes, 18 earth, 14 air, 15 fire, 2 dusk, and this time 2 blank runes. 1.12 actually uses blank runes, which is a bit strange to me. Now this is going to require 10,000 life points to activate, and what it will do, it will downgrade your armor, or give you downgrades for your armor. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this, and the book tells you all about it. 
but the best way to actually see how this works is if you use the raster ritual so and go use over here you see penance ritual it will show you all these different things you can get and how to get all these different downgrade times now it looks very similar here to the arc uh, alchemical table where you have all your four here and then an item here now how this works is that as well as the actual ritual stones you'll need a chest and a item frame now the chest is going to be your six blocks here and the item frame is going to be your catalyst per se so what we're going to do here we're going to go for this downgrade the living armor de deceased um downgrade so in here we've got an iron we've got a blank and we've got a golden apple so if we put our iron and our blank slate in here and our golden apple up here and then activate this we have to stand on top and we have to be wearing living armor now this one i've been wearing for a little while now uh, but yeah we can right click this here a rush of energy goes through it will take a little bit of time but then eventually we should get a downgrade ah you also have to shift <laughs> that's something to know you should you should shift you can activate and then you should shift but as you can see you the items in the inventory have disappeared the catalyst stays so you can use that repeatedly but now you can see we've got the deceased downgrade on here now if you wanted to actually get the tome of this you would have to use a different ritual called the cleansing ritual or the ritual of cleaning or something like that we showed that in the previous tutorial now something else about this specific to uh, the specific ritual here is that this is also based on direction it doesn't matter it's more just for aesthetic but if we had this to face north you can see it moved uh, this is now east we have this built in the east way then if it's south and west so this does obey the cardinal directions but it it's not, it doesn't have a functional ability with it next up we have the gate of the fold this is a very very powerful uh, ritual here it require 15 runes three fire three water three earth three air and three dust so three of everything pretty much and what it does is basically act as an instant teleporter between both dimensions provided the link blocks are the same so here you have the portal this is how it looks and you see we have a grass block on top now what it does is that any blocks that are placed on this top row here is going to be sort of the code or the keychain between the two portals so on the map i have an identical portal here and it's also got a grass block in the center on top of it now before we actually dive through just to demonstrate there are a couple of things you should know uh, if you're teleporting within the same dimension so we're in the overworld if we teleport to the overworld it will cost 50,000 life points to activate but then per teleportation it's 1,000 life points uh, to teleport so every 1,000 life points is teleportation within inside the same dimension so then between dimensions it will again cost 50,000 life points to activate but it's going to be 10,000 life points per teleportation so say we had a, a, another portal linked with the same key or code or maybe even a different code um, for a different set of portals and that was in the nether it will cost us 10,000 per time so once it's activated it's literally jumped through very very simple you see we're now over here and it works both ways it's very powerful and as you can tell instant even between dimensions it's very powerful but it will cost a lot of life points if you're using it regularly now this next one is pretty much if you're sort of a flat pack adventurer sort of person as you can see this looks very very wide but it does have a purpose this is the assembly of the high altar you can probably guess what it does from that it will require 104 runes 20 fire 20 water 20 earth 20 air and 24 dusk a lot of all the different runes and what it will do it will automatically build yourself a blood altar um, using a chest with all the items on top of the master ritual stone now this will cost only 500 life points to activate but it's 250 life points per block so up here i've got in here everything you need for a tier 5 altar so if we activate this here it will now start building it over time 
Unfortunately, there's not a way you can really choose how and the blocks are placed. I believe it's just dependent on what, how, what order you put them in the chest. But as you can see, it actually uses up the chest, or rather, I think the chest is just hidden underneath the altar there. And it's very loud, this. It will take a little bit of time, uh, but eventually it will fill up the entire thing. And there we go, that's all finished. Now I think I uh, accidentally... Oh no, I didn't leave out the bloodstone blocks. For whatever reason it didn't do the bloodstone blocks, which should be placed on top of here. Uh, but, never mind. I think something just went wrong there. Maybe it didn't recognise the blocks. But as you can see, it just built it all perfectly and I destroyed the blood altar. So now if we hover over this with the divination sigil, it goes from one, it should go up to five. There we go, now five in the top left hand corner. So it does build it properly. Now what it will do, as you can see, it's done a lot of the speed runes and that's because of how I've placed them in the chest. I placed a whole stack of those first and then I placed a stack of the blank runes. So it used up all 64 of the speed runes first and then the black ones. So you gotta sort of plan how you want to place the blocks for your system. But it does build, as you can see, all the way up to tier 5. Next we have the Hymn of Siphoning. Now this is sort of like Blood Magic's version of a pump. It requires 8 runes, 4 of them dusk, 1 fire, 1 earth, 1 air and 1 water. And as I said it will siphon fluids in a 16 block radius and put it in a tank that is placed on top of the Master Ritual Stone. This will cost 500 life points to activate, but for every block or source block that is sucked in, it will cost 250 life points. So for this, I've got this little pool here, and I'm using the Blood Magic tanks. Now, these tanks aren't actually in 1.16, but in 1.12 they're here. Now, something to note, in order for it to actually start sucking things out, it needs to have at least one bucket worth of that particular liquid in it first. So if it was empty and it isn't working for you and you're racking your brain like why isn't it sucking up I've done everything correct it's because it has to have at least one bucket inside of it so if this was oil and we had one bucket of oil in it it would start sucking up the oil as uh, but for this we're doing it for, with water so if we activate this here as you can see 2,000 3,000 4,000 and it will place the source blocks with stone now you can set the area I, I think a little bit but uh, the maximum is going to be 16 block radius. So that's 16 blocks out from the center. So it can be quite wide, but with the Ritual Tinkerer, I be do believe that you can actually make it smaller. Yeah, so you can see pump, but you can only make it smaller. You can't make it wider than this. Next, we have the Gathering of the Forsaken Souls. This will require 44 runes, 20 fire, 16 earth, 4 air, and 4 dusk. Now, what this will do as you can see, it's a lot of text here. It will damage mobs in a 21 by 21 by 21 area, and upon the mob's death, a demon crystal will spawn in a nearby demon crystallizer. Now, I've got the demon crystallizer here. I don't exactly know how the aura system works. I've tried to test it out. It definitely does work. I've seen it work, but for me, it doesn't seem to be working too well. Uh, it also accelerates growth of crystals in a seven block radius on the X and Z axis. So if you had multiple rock crystals that already had the beginning crystal spawn, so the main stalk, it will increase the growth of all the spires that are around it. Now, this doesn't actually cost anything to activate, but it is two life points per kill. So you can, actually, this will take a long time to kill things. So if I go into easy mode here and place them underneath, that way they won't burn. As you can see, they're starting to die. Now, it will take a little bit for them to die, of course, as it's obviously one heart at a time. Um, but then it will release their will outside into the air, similar as if you were using a demon crucible. So I'm going to put a demon crucible here. Now that they've died, they should have the aura in the air and a crystal should spawn on here eventually. Uh, it will take some time. I don't know if you how many mobs you need to kill in order for it to actually work, however. 
Now, I've spawned in a common tar direct gem here just to test to see the minimum amount it would take to actually create a stalk. And as you can see, it costs 1024 for a full one. I've placed into the demon crystal ball and it's taken 100 away. So I'm going to harbor a guess that you would have to kill 100 wills worth of mobs in order for the demon crucible or the demon crystallizer, sorry, to actually work. So you're going to have to kill many mobs because it gets from anywhere between one to five. So at the very, or it can be even under one, I believe. So it could be anywhere up to 200 mobs you have to kill before the demon crystal spire actually starts working. So this has spawned quickly as I put it in the demon crucible, but if you just left it running, this would now increase the speed of growth. Next we have the Cry of the Eternal Soul. This is going to require 76 runes, 20 of them fire, 12 blank, 16 air, 12 earth, 8 water and 8 dusk. Now what this will do, it will, put, uh, it will pull blood out of your soul network back into your blood altar. However, for whatever reason, it's not fully in implemented. Uh, on the wikis, I found that it, apparently it just doesn't work, even though you can actually activate it. So maybe it's already sorted out by the time you watch this, but for whatever reason in my testing, it doesn't work. And because this costs 2 million life points in order to actually activate this, which is absolutely crazy in my opinion. So we do actually have enough here, so we can test it out to see if it works. But as well as that, you also need an awakened um, activation crystal. So we're going to be using the creative one as it is, but you can actually get the awakened blood crystal inside of 1.12, which is the nether star and arc mage blood orb. So we're going to use the creative one just for this purpose. And we're going to lose a heck of a lot of points. We're at 3.1 million at the moment. Now, something else to note is that for every one life point that gets put back into the blood altar, it's going to cost you two life points. So if you were trying to put or trying to fill this and say you had it the same size, you're going to lose about half of your life points when you try and do this. But let's give it a go. Let's see if it actually works. We've got 1.9 here. If we place this here, oh, not that, uh, we want to activate on here. How many do we have now? Oh, we got an effect. Are you increasing? It is actually increasing. Okay, I guess it's implemented. <laughs> I must have already activated this before as well. You see, we have Soul Fray here. It is actually going up now. Uh, I think some people may have been seeing that it was having some sort of internal buffer. That's why it wasn't working. But as you can see, it's working now. It didn't actually cost me anything. So I think I may have activated this previously. Um, which is why there's some in here now, um, but it does definitely cost you 2 million and it will, as you can see, it's taking my points down rather quickly. So you do want to turn this off. Not many more left to go. It looks like just five more. And next is the Reverence of the Condor. This is going to be 88 runes, another very large one. It's going to require 36 earth runes, 16 fire, 12 air, 8 water, 8 blank, and 8 dusk. Now this is going to require 1 million life points next year in order to activate but it will do it will give you flight in a 41 by 41 by 61 area now i, I believe it's 61 in height uh, and 41 by 41 on the x and z axis i don't know why it was written like this on the wiki but i wrote it down as is um but something to note is that it will not negate full damage or rather it will negate full damage when you're in the area, but if you fly outside the area and you suddenly start falling, you will take all full damage, so be very, very careful of that. So I'm going to go into survival mode here just to actually demonstrate this. So if we go to survival here, and we go into, see we can't fly, but if we activate this, we now can fly in this area, and it's 41 by 41, so it is quite large, but it will make you fall. That seemed like a lot less than 41. I guess 41 by 41 is it maybe its maximum. How close do I have to get? Oh, there you go, flight. Okay, so it does give you a bit of an icon for when you're gonna be there, but obviously it only gives you one second, or rather zero seconds, so you really have no time to uh, worry. But let's see, let's go for height now. How high can I go? It's definitely, there we go, we start falling, but we can start flying again when we're back inside. So I want to try and redefine this area. So if we go to build define area. Okay, it doesn't look like this area can be defined. So 41 by 41 seems to be just what it is. Uh, there's no other change there. So I suppose you could use this to go up and down towers, but that's it. I tried building a pillar, but it doesn't seem to work. Oh well. 
Next we have the Ritual of the Feathered Earth. This will require 40 runes, 20 air, 12 earth, 4 fire and 4 dusk. And what it will do, it will give you a feathered bust when you're within 25 block radius of the Master Ritual Stone. This will require 5,000 life points to activate and for every half a second it will cost you 5 life points. But I believe that's every half a second while you're within the area. So make sure you don't have this constantly activated and as it said it gives you the buff of feathered so you'll you'll fall slowly so if we fly up here now don't know why but when i switch to creative mode i can fly so if we fly up here now you can see that we actually have the feathered effect now if we go into survival we take no full damage because we have feathered it's very 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 powerful but don't have it ticking all the time obviously otherwise it will drain everything so give it a redstone signal to turn it off next we have the ritual of grounding now this requires 12 runes four dusk and eight of them earth and what it will do it will drag mobs to the ground and stop them from either flying or jumping so this is going to be rather powerful against say blazes as they won't be able to fly away and you can actually hit them for once as well as that is if you had say a circle here with all mobs falling in the center they couldn't even jump off a one block um distance because they cannot jump at all now players players can actually jump um, as you'll see when we activate it now this is going to require 5,000 life points in order to activate and then 20 life points per second so it's going to take a lot of life points to keep this going but if we activate this here and then let's go into easy mode what we can do is we have a blaze here you can see that he's not actually able to fly at all as they usually are able to so if we go over here just to show they probably should fly straight away there you go even just by that you can see he gets hit or if we put him here apparently they just like falling I don't know why <laughs> but with this guy even when I hit him he doesn't even come off the ground which just proves that it's pulling you down as with this guy he's getting hit a little bit let's see if I hit him towards the area how close does he have to be there you go just there so there's the edge Quite a decent range to be honest, so it would be good for, say, a blaze farm. Last two, first up, we have the Veil of Evil. Now, this is going to cost 20, or sorry, 72 runes, 32 of them earth, 20 blank, 16 dusk, and 4 fire. And what this will do, it will allow mobs to spawn in a 65 by 65 by 65 area, regardless of a light level. So even when it's blistering daylight and they're outside, uh, it will constantly spawn mobs and all mobs, so whatever you have in the pack, it will spawn them. Now, this is going to cost you 150,000 life points to actually activate, but then a further 20 life points per second. So you don't want this going all the time either, unless you have a big income. So we're going to stick this on hard just to really try it out, and we're going to activate it here. It should start spawning things straight away. Now, I'm not 100% sure. There you go. One's already spawned. Now, I, I don't know whether the rule of you, they can only spawn when they're 28 blocks away from you. It might be the case. Yeah, it does seem to be the case. Now they're spawning loads because we're a, bit, a little bit far away. So it's a very dangerous thing. Definitely don't have this near your base as it's quite a large area that they can actually spawn in, as you can see. But most of them will be dying, of course, because uh, it's daytime. <laughs> Just get oh, wow. We have baby skeletons in this. Well, that's the end of them. And last but not least we have the Ward of Sacrosanctity. Sanctity. This is going to request a 32 runes, 12 of them fire, 8 water, 8 air, and 8 dusk. And this is going to be the exact opposite of the previous ritual, as it prevents mobs from spawning in a 63 by 63 by 63 area, regardless of the light level. So if it was pitch black in a cave, it doesn't matter, you slap this on, mob proof. Now this is going to cost 150,000 life points to activate again, but it's going to cost 300 life points per second. So it's going to cost a hell of a lot to keep your base completely spawn proof so this is what i mean when we were showing with the mark of the tower if you want to have life points constantly being flowed in then you're gonna have to have some big system set up and i did not mean to break that now 
That is actually every single ritual that is remaining in Blood Magic for 1.12. However, you may see in your Ritual Diviner that there are extras that I haven't covered today. And there is a reason for this. Now, there is a mod called Woot. I don't know what it stands for, but it's basically an extension of Blood Magic. And they have certain rituals themselves, but we will not be covering them today as that is not to do with Blood Magic Vanilla itself. If this is wanted in the future, maybe we could cover it, but Woot is a separate mod, so we will not be covering that today. So these are some of the names that you may find in your Ritual Diviner, which don't actually have anything to do with Blood Magic. It's to do with Woot that works with Blood Magic. And that is the Ritual of Mechanical Altar, the Ritual of the Sanguine Urn and the Ritual of the Cloned Soul. But besides that, that is everything vanilla now for rituals in Blood Magic 1.16. If this did help you out in any way, shape or form, please could you leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And maybe join the Discord, we have a link down in the description, we're a growing community, there's now up to 50 members in there, which is absolutely insane, more and more of you guys from YouTube are popping in, and it's great to see the Twitch community and the YouTube community hanging out together all in the same space. As I said, I also stream on Twitch, that is every Thursday, Sunday and Monday, and if you're watching this, you might, I might even be live right now, so that will also be down in the description if you want to check it out. But guys, till next time.